You've reached Conversation with Mr. A. This is your host, Anthony Apostilla. Thank you for listening. Let's get right to the episode. Welcome to the Season 3 premiere of Conversations with Mr. A. This is your host, Anthony Abastilla. So for this episode, I've got some returnees. Uh, My two two of my best friends, Dustin Johnson and Chris Barnes. Uh, Thank you guys for being on this episode again. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great to be here, Anthony. Enjoy your company all the time. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So... Uh, this title of this episode, it's Three Plus Decades of Friendship. So for the listeners out there, just give you a little bit of history. Uh, I've been uh, best friends with Dustin since September of 1986. And Chris, uh, we've been best friends since September 1993. So for the, both of you guys, do you remember how we all met in the first place? Oh, I definitely know how we, we all met. Well, I met this guy right here. Chris, in band mean Chris, class. Chris, Chris. Yeah. Okay. I met Chris in band class. You know, we were just two lonely drummers, and whatnot. Of course, I met you. You know, in first grade, Mr. Plinsky's class. You know, we figured out that we only lived like four houses down from each other, so we figured, you know, let's be friends. We 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 you know went through wrestling together, and Nintendo together. When Chris, when I met Chris, we also had Nintendo. He wasn't not that far away from our house either, you know. When when I went, you know, moved back to Conifer Drive, you know, and then you know, just from there, we were bandies for life, basically, you know. And then you know, it just became an amazing friendship from there. So. Yeah, for me, it was uh, also band class that we all met together and just kind of hung out and. You know, just one thing led to another, and we all became friends. And for some reason, we all clicked, even though we're totally separate people. Oh, no. But we yeah, all we seem to manage to be friends for life. Heck yeah, man. For the listeners out there, let's take some guesses here. Um, what instruments did you guys play? Oh, I played the drums. I pretend to play the drums, but I wasn't very good. He was way better than me, <laughs> trust me. So, I played the flute. Um, okay, so one back... Band camp? No. <laughs> no, we, we might have to share some band camp oh, stories a little bit. Camps, we, can, yeah. we can share that a little bit. Um, so back when we met, what were the early likes and interests? Do you remember back in the day? You mentioned, alluded to some of them, Nintendo, wrestling. What else do you guys remember? Um, why don't you take this one first? Uh, so I remember like a lot of uh, band trips we went when we went to California. We had some great times over there just hanging out and doing a bunch of fun stuff. And just a lot of times going to each other's houses and trying to oh, wrestle with yeah. each other and pretending that yeah. we're WWE no, actually, stars. I remember, I think my house is like pay-per-view central for any, yeah. any nice. like WWF back then, all those pay-per-views, you know, mm-hmm. why not. Um, that was definitely our biggest commonality, I think, was wrestling at the time. And, of course, mm-hmm. video games, you know. And, of course, you know, down the road, girls, you know, but... I Gotta to keep say, PG. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna say anything else, but just <laughs> girls. So, I mean. yeah, that there was a lot of fun times. You know, uh, Dustin's house was definitely the wrestling house of the world. Yeah. Anthony's house was definitely the food house oh, where yeah. they always oh, went to man. eat ponsit, <laughs> <laughs> Filipino oh. food. Yeah, it was good times. I, I gained my first 40 pounds off of your mom's ponsit. So. <laughs> you know, one thing you Chris you mentioned, uh, and this was uh, I, this was super epic. The band trips. And I remember wow. California. Who, anybody want to talk about that? that? was Knott's Berry Farm, Disneyland, band competitions. Anybody want to speak on that? Because that was an epic trip. Let's talk about California. Why don't we? <laughs> huh? Okay. I, I guess I figure I'll just mention it, you know. We kicked butt, you know, in the competition. You know, I think we won like 10, 11, maybe 12 trophies just uh, from us alone. You know, of course... We had great times. We went to Disneyland, Magic Mountain, you know, medieval times. But I distinctly remember the night after the big party, we got back to the hotel. We were making so much noise. And all of a sudden, I was just seeing everybody just crazy. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I felt something on my head. And I'm like, I didn't think it was going to rain today. And all of a sudden, I figured somebody actually was peeing out of the balcony. And unfortunately, it just landed on my head. You know, I mean, and that was about it. And then apparently I got a call 
from the room right above me who went to the bathroom. We're like, I am so sorry about that. It was actually one of our other fellow drummers, you know? Of course. So, yeah, I guess he couldn't wait. Somebody was in the bathroom, and then it just happened. So what can you do? Poor soul. <laughs> <laughs> no, just great times having this stuff. And I remember uh, not only the uh, Disney trips and stuff like that, but uh, me and Dustin actually had a... Uh, band thing where we went and uh, performed for Guys and Dolls, oh, and we're yeah. part of the orchestra. Oh, that's right. That oh, was back in junior that. high. Yeah, so, yeah, we uh, we actually were part of the band, you know, and yes, we did Guys and Dolls, and it was like what, eighth or ninth grade, yes. you know, and yeah, it was like, you know, a month's worth of like, you know, performances and whatnot. That was actually quite fun, mm-hmm. you know, because we had to borrow some of the, uh, some of Fairview's like band equipment and whatnot. You know, we had it in your car, that Mercury mm-hmm. that you had, you know, and then, yeah, we performed at Sea Stock, which is not there anymore. It's like more of a homeless encampment now. So, unfortunately. I remember my memories there was, uh, I had a, I had a good time about meeting people, if you will, meeting people and socializing. You remember that? It was fun meeting people here and there. Let's not talk about Anthony and socializing. It wasn't that bad, was it, guys? I think Anthony had a little (laughs) heads up. He had a little better thing than us, because he had those, uh, whiskers that came out of nowhere, like eight feet long. Oh, my mustache? Oh, God. (laughs) Trust me, Anthony and socializing. Let's talk about California now. (laughs) Okay, Knott's Berry Farm, the big party after the competition. We won everything. We're dancing the night away. I can't find Anthony because he's actually in the middle of a bunch of girls. Who, me? No, no, no. I I was just sitting on the corner by myself, just sitting low. I was behaving myself. I was behaving myself. We got pictures. We got pictures. I was behaving myself. 35 millimeter negatives, so it's okay. Oh, gosh. (laughs) <laughs> no, I was just talking with him. They were just saying hi, and you know, we were just, he was just playing a few good songs here oh, and there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, ah. absolutely. I, I mean, I mean, if I was Anthony, I'd be in the middle of like two, three, twenty girls, you know. So. <laughs> that wasn't me. I was just uh, uh, saying hi, and uh, yeah, they, they were from out of state, so I was just you know saying, hey, where are you from? The you know? Nile is also a river in Egypt too, buddy. Oh so. man. Now, okay. One thing, so we all graduated or um, around the 98, around the time. How was life after high school? Because that was a big turning point. I know, Chris, you've got a story, but how was life, 98, 99 was that turning point? I, I, went, right, I went right to Olympic College, just like you did, yeah. you know. So I, was on a, I was on a music scholarship at the time, you know, for two straight years, just playing nothing but band, band, band. I didn't really, I didn't really get an education there because of the fact that, the music department was paying for my education just to be a musician, you know, so that was basically me. And then, of course, you know, got my first jobs back then, you know, I was working at McDonald's for $4.90 an hour, you know, and then in uh, once I graduated, I was working at Azteca because they thought I looked Mexican at the time, you know, even though I'm like half Filipino. Um, that's pretty much it, man. It's like work life, school life still, you know, and the, until I had to move. Yeah, that's just me back right after high school. Yeah, my life took a little drastic turn. I got involved with the wrong people, got involved with the drugs and the alcohol and everything else like that. So I ended up dropping out of high school. And then I ended up going back to alternative school and graduating from alternative school in 99. So a year after these guys had graduated, I was finally getting my diploma from uh, Olympic High School. Then I sat there and uh, you know looked at my life, found out I was going nowhere. So I decided to join the Navy, and I cut everybody out of my life. Uh, basically uh, leave and go away. In my opinion, bro, that was probably the best decision you would have ever had to make right there, you know? So, I mean, I mean, 20 years in the Navy, man. I mean, yeah. not, a lot, not a lot of people can say they've done 20 years in the Navy. It was know? a big life change. It was a really big life change. Yes, definitely was a life change, you know. When I cut everybody out of my life, you know, I really didn't think I was going to have that many people stay in my life, but somehow you two uh, ended up staying in my uh, life. We're just like, we're, there. We're, we're, we're just like leeches, man. So <laughs> we've been, And, you know, the one thing that um, I found amazing is uh, through everything. So you're in the military for a period of time. You're gone for a period of time. Uh, Dustin, bro, you were gone for a period of time, too. You were in Vegas for, like, seven, seven years. years. We're in yeah. separate states. So I think the question I have for uh, both you guys, how did we manage to stay in touch through it all over those years? Well, my parents were not really happy with the long-distance phone bills that I had, you know, calling oh, yeah. you, you two jokers up, <laughs> yeah. you know. And then, you know, of course, you know, I remember Chris, you know, because Las Vegas for me was almost like central location for, like, friends and family coming over now. You know, at that point in time in my life, when I was still going to school, 
And I remember Chris coming in from California, actually. Anthony, his parents had a timeshare also in Vegas, so yearly they would come also. So that's kind of, sort of like a reuniting right there, or else I would come up back up to Washington for vacations while I was in college, you know. So, I mean, we, we did it, you know. I mean, of course we didn't have the luxury of, like, Skype or Zoom or anything like that back then, but still made it happen no matter what, you know. So, I mean, plus, you know, my parents are like, you know, I think it's time for you to get a cell phone so we don't have to pay on the long-distance bills anymore. So I'm like, okay, I will then. So that's how I, you know, that's how I kept, kept in touch with you guys. Actually, bro, the funny thing is, that's how I got, that's how I got to do cell phones back then. I was like, oh, you can call long distance here without worry about, know, about huh? phone bills. Just in case you guys don't know, for you younger listeners out there, cell phones, you are blessed because you can call long distance. Now, back in the day, you can ask your uh, families, uh, parents on this, if you call long distance from your home line, let's just say if you called from another state or even out of your area, how much How much was the charge back then, guys? It was like... Oh, uh, man. I mean, back then, it had to have been anywhere between like 99 cents to like $1.30 a minute. Mm-hmm. That was $2. You know, wasn't it 2 or $3? It, it, was, it could have been, It was man. expensive. It was expensive. Just yeah. trust me. I mean, a 10-minute phone call with either Chris or Anthony... Mm-hmm cost my parents like almost 20 bucks so yeah. i still remember when uh, cell phones first came out you know they had that calling plan where you had the minutes uh, yeah. and you would always yep. tell your friends you know don't call me until after eight o'clock exactly because eight o'clock is my... free yep yep oh man i remember that <laughs> when we only had like 800 minutes like mm-hmm. throughout the day or whatnot yep yeah. oh my gosh and remember this young listeners our cell phones were like bricks we can literally knock somebody unconscious with our cell phones back then you know, and about the distance, I'll share a story. This was great. I remember this uh, when you lived in Vegas. Distance, we'd always call and call you as well, Chris. And I remember uh, one time I worked a job in overnight shift, and I remember Dustin. Sorry, uh, I remember you had a past relationship that you broke up. I remember it was awesome because you did me a favor. You called me and you were down about it, but then you kept me awake the whole overnight shift from like, the, I think my shift started at 11 o'clock at night, went till 7, yeah. and you would talk to me over and over, and I was like, oh, dude, he kept me awake the whole time. I'm pretty sure um, I remember that call, you know, and finally again, we had cell phones, you were on an overnight shift. I think we were probably on the phone at least till 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, no, it was, it was about four or five. Oh I remember that. Oh my gosh, was it that? Oh my gosh. Oh, it was great. Oh, it was good for me. It kept me awake. I got paid. For, I got paid to hear you cry about your <laughs> your ex girlfriend. Well, I guess it happens, right? There. Yeah. Yep. Um. Okay. So, I want to ask you guys a question. Um. How do you, in general, what are your what are your views on friendship? Um. Because you know what we have, I feel like is rare. You know, we've been friends for like uh, thirty plus years. I feel I feel like it's rare. Uh, why do you? Wh- how do you guys view friendships and just uh, getting to know people in general? What, what's your views on it? Well, I think uh, with uh, all the social media that we have out nowadays and all the other stuff, we have a lot of fake friends. A lot of people that will say you're their friend, they'll say that stuff, but they won't really be there. So, like, if you want to know if a friend is a friend, call them up in the middle of the night. Tell them you have a problem, and if they're there for you in the middle of the night, they're your friend. Oh yeah, you know? I, I actually remember that, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, again, we already know what happened and whatnot, but yeah, bro, I mean, I mean, usually I'm a night owl sometimes, you know, so, you know, if, if you catch me, I will answer the phone no matter what. And of course, I remember, you don't never call me that late at night unless there was a big problem, so we took care of it. But I have to say, just like him, you know, social media and whatnot, it's an easy way of connecting with your friends, but you're not going to have a relationship the way that I have to say you, me, and Chris, you know, have. You know, it's super, super rare. I mean, we went through good times, we went through bad times, and now, you know, we're, 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 we have families now, you know? And you look at a lot of uh, friendship, and people like uh, talk about, like, oh, I'm not your friend unless we do the same things, we have the same likes, and you look at the three of us, you know. We all different likes. You know, all I, different likes, I was you know? the drug abuser, the alcoholic. You have Dustin, who was the magician, you know, and the ladies' man. You had Anthony, who was the good two-shoe and had the church-going stuff, and we all had really different lives, like lives you wouldn't see normally meshing together, but some reason we all clicked. Exactly. And, I mean, they always say opposites attract, you know. Yeah. So... And it's I mean, a good point you're talking about about the fake friends because I mean I see that um, I know I've say, I say this often to people I know is okay you can have 500 600 no excuse me 5k followers on Instagram or you can have 6,000 friends or even 600 likes on TikTok and everything but. 
do they really call you and take the time to spend the time because I mean I think we can all attest that we've done that yeah, yeah. so yeah if you want to know if somebody's your friend call them at 3 o'clock in the morning and yep. tell them you're having trouble yep. if they're at your door they're your friend exactly you man. know if they're sitting there saying they got too busy or they're yeah. not able to do anything then uh, you know they're not your friend they're not really your friend you know so, so. Uh. All right, all right, guys. So um, towards the end of this interview, my favorite part of the interview is called word association. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yes, we all know this, I'm going to shoot out one or two words and just tell me the first things that come to mind. So first word, we all know this, how much I love this from the, my last school. What do you guys think about pickles? My daughter loves them. She'll eat them like nonstop. Okay. Yeah, they're an abomination. <laughs> all right, okay. Dating relationships. Dating in general. Too digitized. You know, you got to find the right person. It's just like somebody that actually you can see yourself growing old with, somebody that you can see yourself like spending forever with. If you can't see that in a person, then, you know, it's just not worth it. You got to find somebody that you mesh with, somebody that you click with, and somebody that, you know, you can see being there for the rest of your life. You know, somebody that you know will be there and love you regardless of what happens in life. And when I say too digitized, meaning... Mm -hmm. You can have a relationship with somebody, but all of a sudden, you know, you guys are on your phones, you know? It's, it's not like, you know, remember, we didn't have cell phones back then. We actually had to physically do stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen relationships now these days, this is what they're doing, and then this is how they're communicating, you know? And what he's doing, he's just doing with his thumbs, filling with his thumbs through a phone. Hey, it's not my fault my current girlfriend's AI. Hey, hey, you know what? Hey, Siri is a wonderful person, okay? Uh, she's a wonderful, she's super loyal, she'll do anything you really want. And I understand it, okay? I understand. But she loves me, you don't understand. I know she loves you she's because she loves real. everybody. AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, uh, next word. <laughs> How about the next word? Shopping. Oh my God, where is all my money gone? Amazon. <laughs> Halloween. Love it. Oh, going to gain 20 pounds in the candy. Yep. Great. Christmas. Love it. Oh, time for family, time for friendship, and time for bonding with each other. That's but I have no room for a Christmas tree. That's okay. No worries. You know, that's why, you know, I mean, you know, you know, since you have cats, you know, mm -hmm. you can put your Christmas tree upside down on the ceiling. Ooh, that, there right? you go. That way they don't, you know, climb up it or anything like They'll that. They'll still get up there. I know they will. Here's one. Here's a good one. MTV. Video killed the radio yeah. star. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about reality shows now. It's never about the music videos anymore. Yeah, I used to love it when they used to have all those oh, music videos God. on, and it was so much fun. Yeah, and then Jersey Shore took over. Yeah. Which, don't get me wrong, I'm a sucker for that show. I don't care. So. <laughs> Nintendo. Still love it. Yeah, that's a good times, you know, before they all got really 3D and you could spin around and stuff like that and you got all dizzy. It was okay. just two-dimensional. I love that and stuff. And again, youngsters, if you see your mom or dad, okay, take the Nintendo game out and just start blowing on the cartridge, it works. Okay, <laughs> we don't know why, it just works. Well, that's because Nintendo was trying to teach us CPR at a young age. Oh, that is true, actually. Yes. That is true. That uh, is true. I had a hard time breathing at times. Okay, here's a good one. Nerds. I am one. Ah, uh, the best candy in the world. That Just crunchy, yeah. crunchy, yep. crunch. Yes and yes, both. <laughs> I'm one myself, and it is the best candy. Uh, oh, here's a good one. Hygiene. Yeah, you better do it, you know, to be honest with you. So, I mean, um, now these days, not so much. So, uh, I mean, in general, not me, but just in general, nobody really likes to wash themselves now these days. So, It's one of those things, like... If you really love somebody, you'll tell them that they stink. Oh, I do that uh, to my wife all the time. So yeah, it's okay, so. because the fact of the matter is, like, you know, I, I tell somebody that, hey, man, you, you kind of smell, you need to take a shower. It's love, you know, because I don't want them walking around to a whole bunch of people, and everybody's like, Ew, what the hell's that exactly. smell? And the nice thing is I don't tell my wife that she really stinks. I say, you must have had a very productive day, honey. You know, that we call it productivity, not stink. So, oh. Yeah. I love your code. Um... <laughs> Social media. Oh, that's the devil, basically. Just don't get me wrong. So, 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 social media, in my opinion, in general, I know, I know it's called word association, but we're just going to be doing a rant session now. Social media, in general, I love for the fact that I can connect with my family and friends a lot easier than, say, calling them up or, like, you know, 
writing them a letter, you know, text message is cool, you know, FaceTime, awesome, you know, but I think social media now these days in general is ruining this world, so. It just, uh, you know, too much time trying to pretend like you're somebody's friend, giving them that like, giving them that thumbs up, yep. whatever, but you never really talk to them, you never really exactly. get to know them and connect with them, you know, so you have like 500 like, friends like, on Facebook, like, like, but... Like, you know, do you know any of their kids' names? Do you know any of their other stuff that's going on? Absolutely. You know, it's yeah. Uh, a few more. I got a few more here. How about uh, WWE? Uh, yeah, still the greatest wrestling organization in the world. You know, to be honest with you, I still like it. I only watch highlights now these days. Um. Well, it's more of a thing when I was a kid. I was into with you guys, but just growing up, it's kind of like faded away. You know, kind of one of those things. Uh, I still go to the little uh, little town shows, whatever, and watch those things whenever you ref. But you know, it just hasn't been a priority in my life. Maybe recently. one day we should all just go to an actual like WWE match and see what happens. So, oh, so okay. In closing, um, I just want to ask you guys what final words would you want to tell our listeners when just like if you want to have like a bottom line when you're talking about friendships and relationships? Because again, we've been best friends for more than thirty years. What we have is rare that we've kept this friendship going. What would you tell our listeners just in general about friendships, relationships, the most important message you want to tell them? Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's not a job, really. A friendship like ours, you know, took work, okay? Uh, it took an effort from each and every one of us to make this bond still strong. You know, it's a super, super rare thing to say, I have a, I've had a friend, you know, I've known for 40 years, or I've had a friend that I've known for 30 years. No matter what, we stuck with it, okay? Whether we were overseas, whether we were in other states, whether we just hated each other for like a week or so, it doesn't matter. In the end, I think friendship, you know, is like a home. We just go back to it, you know? And again, we work at it, and it's, I have to say it's never been any stronger. Yeah, I would say with uh, friendship, it's uh, open and honest communication yep. and just knowing that the person that you're friends with is going to piss you off every once in a while. Oh, yeah. They're going to make you mad. They're going to make I you want to kill them. They're going to make you want to do this stuff. But it's just understanding that each person has their own life and their own personality and their own stuff. You're never going to totally agree 100% of the time. Yep. But like, once you find that good friend, stick with them. They're going to be there for you. you know? Absolutely. All right. Hi right, guys, I am proud to call you guys my best friends. Thank you so much for this interview and uh, just uh, taking the time, guys. All right, thank yeah, you very much. Appreciate it, Anthony. All right.